maybe it was self-protection, which is why you lied, right? So it don't necessarily feel good to lie, but to tell the truth would have been, would have felt too vulnerable. It would have felt too risky. And, and so you chose the lie instead. You blocked yourself from being fully loved in mm -hmm. that moment, from being fully seen because you wanted to lie and be deceitful instead and hide. You can't be fully loved in the, in, the, in the dark. So um, it has to be the grace. I need to give you the same grace that I need, that I know I need. That is the accountability is an acknowledging that I need grace because I know I'm an F up. I know I'm going to say something out of line. I know I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to be so real about that that when I look at you, I see myself. And I shut up. And I let you talk. And I let you feel. And when you go crazy and you stress and you lash out, I create peace because I know that's what I would need in your situation. So... Yeah, it's, account it's, it's, it's more than her personal accountability. It's communal accountability. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is good. <laughs> I want to talk to you about, because you talk about grace, and rarely do we discuss these things in relationships, because I do believe two things you do need for a healthy relationship or marriage is grace and space, right? And mm -hmm. we, talk about a, 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 we talked about vulnerability, like when I'm struggling with something, or when I feel like I have to be vulnerable with my wife, I will ask her or say, are you available? Or, you know, can we talk for a second? So that way she has a different set of ears. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm learning to say things deeper than just I'm mad or I'm pissed off. Like <laughs> I'm vulnerable or very good. Very yeah, good. I feel alone. Like going deeper opposed to I'm just mad because I think a lot of times with men we only have you on that phone all the time. Or I want your attention, babe. I feel I, I feel alone. Mm -hmm. And I need you. I like you. I want to spend time with you. I want to see your face. That sounds much better to me as a woman that you that you want me, not you want to control how I spend my time. Yes. And, you know, it's funny you say that because I, I'm, I'm thinking the other day, because I think pride destroys a lot of relationships, too. Destroy mine. <laughs> say that. OK, well, are, you want to talk about that? <laughs> <laughs> OK, <laughs> let, let me let me let it let me let the groundwork real quick, then, since we're here, because I don't think we talk about this enough. And I never talked about my relationship to like on the interwebs for real. It be huh? it be out there in little patches, but I don't talk about it on the internet. Okay, well, pew, 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 but I can. Pew. I don't have no problem. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing: when I was talking to my wife the other day, we, you know, it was like texting because I'm at work, and I told her because I used to. I sometimes I still struggle with pride, right? Like I still struggle with it sometimes. But I texted her the other day and I said, I miss when we get to spend a long time together and we just kind of like kicking it or we just listening to some hip hop, whatever, like just that individual time where we're not discussing bills, kids, responsibilities. And it yeah. took me to be vulnerable to say that to her, like, I miss spending that time with you because we're so busy. But I struggled with it because I was like, ugh. This is going to make me vulnerable. This is going to make me feel like I need her kind of thing. So I struggle with that, but I did it. Okay, well, let's talk about it then. <laughs> you want to you 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 want to get you want to give us just a little um sneak peek, just a little bit behind the curtain. Just give us a little bit. You ain't you don't have to spill all the tea, but if you this is an exclusive, right? So you got to give us for a sure, bit. for okay. sure. Okay. Um, so I got married straight out of college. Uh, I got married at 22, it's November 22nd, 2014. Uh, so Wait. I was fresh out of college. Um, I graduated in May. We had a baby already. Um, and I definitely liked that boy a whole lot. I ain't gonna hold you. I liked him a lot. I did. Um, it was crazy because I didn't like nobody before him for real. Like I liked it. I liked boys and I went out on dates, but I had not really had a boyfriend for real before him or anything like that. Definitely wasn't having sex or anything like that. And then he just came out of nowhere and I don't know 
what list God read from one of my old journals, but he just seemed like everything that I wanted. <laughs> like, he was just, it was, the, the list was listed. Okay, he was in law school. He was black, specifically dark skin. You know, it's I'm not colorist. I'm not racist. I I just like what I like, man. <laughs> um, and he, you know, was a church goer, and not just a church goer, but um, there are theological convictions that, especially back then, I held on to very, very, very strongly. And even though he was new to a lot of those things, he didn't become a believer until his adult uh, years or until like, you know, right around college or whatever. He was uh, growing in that tradition and growing in that understanding and really outpaced me in the in the ter- in the length of our friendship and relationship. And while our relationship was full of tumult from the beginning, it was messy and it was everything I would have would have never wanted for a relationship or for a boyfriend or girlfriend situation. Um, he, I was in love with him as a, as, as a man. And that's important because I'm going to come back around to that point. (laughs) Okay. Everything about him. I loved his origin story. I loved, I loved how I loved, I loved his, I I loved his dreams and his goals. I loved dreams and goals that he didn't even have for himself yet that I saw in him. I, I, that he now still kind of has a little bit, but whatever. Like I, I, I love that man. Sideburns. I loved his left dimple. I loved it all. Love that man to, from the day I decided I loved him. And um, when we got married, again, like I said, the whole thing before that was messy and and terrible and it just wasn't an ideal situation. Um, it's not something that I would recommend. If I could go back and say, I would have told me to wait or not get married. Even though I loved him, I would have said, this is not how you do it. Mm. Um, and so we were married. It continued to be messy. There was a lot of fighting, a lot of bickering, a lot of confusion. Um, it was just really, it was really, really painful. It was really painful for the both of us. Um, and we fought over the things that a lot of couples fight over, mainly money, mm-hmm. mainly on my part, my, my, mainly my choices with money. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can I can very much attest to that that was uh, a huge uh, issue that I brought into the relationship because that's who I was like before I was I wasn't great with money before, like the actual practical usage of it. I had a lot of knowledge up here about what was best and that showed up in different points in our marriage. But my actual practices in certain areas were very damaging to me and very and obviously in a marriage, this one. So it was, you know, very damaging to us. And I know that there there, there are probably countless opportunities and situations that we missed out on uh, because of my choices. And I still carry a a lot of shame around that um, even. But the fact of the matter is that was some of the issue that I brought. But I also know the personal inner issue that I brought that he might have felt but was never able to actually verbalize in a way that I could understand was how cold I felt or was um, toward him. I guess that he expected me to act like girls from his past because he did have relationships before me. Um, I wasn't the typical girly girl texting you all day calling you 10 times a day and oh babe I just want to be up under you all the time and when you come home from work I want to tell you all the gossip at work no (laughs) when I'm at work I'm at work I'm trying to be great with you and I want you to be great at work so let's leave each other alone and then when we come together in my head at least this has supposed to go my man supposed to come home we post kiss we already had a kid coming into the to the to the to the wet to, to the into the marriage. Right. So it's not like we had that period of time where it's just the honeymoon season and everything is good and we just get to curl up on the couch and ne- watch Netflix and no, baby, somebody cooking dinner, it's it's laundry getting done. There's life being lived here already, right? Mm-hmm. Um and the inner issues, this is what I truly believe. The inner issues, going back to what I was originally saying. The inner issues that I brought with me, that fear of rejection. That's the hugest one. Mm-hmm. His fear of abandonment and rejection. Those are the things that even when you cooking dinner, washing the dishes, mm-hmm. that's the thing that stops you from touching 
the man or the woman you love and just lightly caressing their face because you're scared they're going to jump back or act weird or act like they don't like you or act like, what are you doing? It's weird stuff in your brain. It's like, he married me. Why would he not want my affection? Mm -hmm. And there were times where I showed affection in a way that I knew how that I didn't feel like was well received. So when that happened, and I'm and, and I know for a fact that the same thing happened to him where he was trying to show me affection in, in a way that he knew how, and I did not give him the reaction he was looking for. And his man was like, Well, won't be doing that again. <laughs> won't be putting myself out there like that again. Mm -hmm. And so we're constantly playing this game within ourselves of let me tiptoe out there and try to love this person a little bit. Oh, they didn't respond how I want them to respond. I'm gonna go back to my corner. And it and it was uh, it, between the between the arguments because the arguments were frequent, yeah, constant, <laughs> yeah. But in the tension in between, mm. there wasn't much loving happening. I know, I know on my part, mm. the the woman I've allowed myself to be in my friendships, uh, the small amount of I guess dating ish or whatever you want to call it, I've done and since the, the ending of my marriage um, and who I am to myself. I know that I am capable of so much more affection and love and openness and tenderness. And I had to make a choice within myself that I was going to do that recklessly because I deserve to walk in that part of my femininity. Mm -hmm. I deserve to be soft to people that I love. I deserve to cook for them and kiss all over. I don't, want, I don't really want to get married for real, so that you know, let's throw that out there. It's all good, I, you know. But if I did marry folks, though, <laughs> yeah, right. If you. that was the goal. Speaking of scary to remarry, baby, I'm very scared. <laughs> <laughs> but if that was the goal, I, I, you know, I just, I deserve to plan elaborate trips for him to buy. I used to buy my, that was my love language. I used to buy my ex-husband a lot of gifts. I used to, I remember this one birthday, I did a census uh, birthday gift. I gave him like a bag with sight and sound and taste. He had like these new colognes and I got him this watch that he freaking fell in love with and lost in an airport in Atlanta. He was very sad about it because that was my, his favorite gift for me. Like, that was my one thing I did get right, but I still got that wrong because I was spending money we didn't have and he didn't like that very much, which made me feel rejected because it's like, dang, I worked so hard for this. Why are you tripping about the money? We're going to make the money. Just enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Money stories, life's purpose, so many different things that we really could have just had a conversation about instead of it, things getting really bad and us arguing and everything blowing up and us antagonizing each other's mindsets and experiences it really could have just been a let's have a conversation come to some real agreements and compromises make some real decisions i sabrina needed to practice radical honesty radical vulner vulnerability and um radical self-discipline um because it wasn't it should it, even though submission is was and is important to me it couldn't it could have never just been about submission to him it all I had to convince myself that what he is saying and the vision he has for our family is right. And in order to accomplish that visit, vision, we have to do it in a way that recognizes that his systems work too. And that's where I wish we could have come to a uh, 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 understanding that both of our unique experiences and how they shape our minds, our personalities, our desires, our systems are equally valued valuable in this marriage and in this family and our our family our legacy our mission is worth staying up all night for talking figuring it out mm -hmm. i wish we could have come to that point mm -hmm. but that would have required a vulnerability on my part and maybe on his part too but we're not focusing on them focusing on me it would have required a vulnerability on my part and a sitting down of my pride to say you could say everything right and you could do everything right and he could still not like it. But guess what? God is still in control. God is still good. You are in no danger. You are still safe. Mm -hmm. Safety is not, not my, it's the number one thing for me. If I don't feel emotionally safe, 
in a situation. I don't care if it's my parents with my mom or my friends. They, they, they wouldn't be my friend if they if I don't feel emotionally safe with them. <laughs> um, but, you know, if I don't feel emotionally safe, then it makes it a lot harder for me to do that, which is why I come back to the point about me being in love with him because I really did love him, but I didn't always like the way he made me feel. Most of the time, I did not like the way he made me feel, especially about my own self. And um, those two things I think are important. I can love you and I don't like the way you make me feel. And there have been dudes who have made me feel like I am the world. But when I look at them, I don't feel any admiration. I don't feel, I feel a general respect for them as a man, but I don't look up to them. Like I want to kind of look up to my partner. I want to feel like, damn, like, mm, you got something going on over there and I want to be a part of that. Also- I don't be feeling like that about these dudes. I don't. I, don't, I only ever felt like that about my ex-husband. I'm not going to lie to you. So let me ask you this, because there is so much to unpack. I I'm, I guess I'm going to have to bring you on the show so I'll do it like a part <laughs> two, because there's so much stuff I want to ask. Yeah. Um, because I'm always asking questions. When right. we talk about admiration, what are the traits of a man that you would admire? <laughs> me personally. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, your personal me, opinion. Yeah. Because this is a bit, this is a, this is an interesting question. It's a question I get asked a lot and I try to skirt around it because men usually ask me this because they try to come off as that. And I'm like, no, baby, just be yourself because I'm not gonna like you anyway. Yeah. Um hey, thanks again for watching another segment of a scary to remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarry, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.